And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes here on the Winds of New England. Glad to have you along. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Semi-final week. And uh, Joe Taverney is trying to do something that uh, has not been done for a while, but he's got two wins together. He needs two more to get into the Tournament of Champions. I'm sure you know when it happened. I won't put you on the spot and you can tell <laughs> me when it happened, but it's pretty tough to run the table. But uh, Joe's trying to try to make it three in a row, but uh, standing in his way, pretty tough bowler. i tell you what, I won't tell you now. I'll tell you after we take our first break. How's that? That'll keep people okay. tuned in. All right. Let's meet our two bowlers here for today's semifinal match. First of all, our number five seed. Two wins in a row already from Lynn, Massachusetts, Joe Tavernese. Okay, Joe averaging 125, high single 207, high triple 484. Two weeks ago, a 370 for Joe as he knocked off Rick Barassa, and then last week, a 404 as he knocked off Bill Coffold uh, to win his second in a row. So now he moves into the semifinals against our number two seed from East Kingston, New Hampshire, Brian Fuller. Okay, Brian comes in averaging 121, high single 190, and high triple 464. And guess what? We still have a bonus ball contest growing up to $160 this week. And so if your postcard is here, perhaps you'll get a chance to win it a little bit later on in the hour. But we've got a three-game match coming up. Joe Tavernese and Brian Fuller, and we'll get it started right after these messages. Don't go away. To the semifinals we go now. Joe Tavernese, our number five seed, trying to make it three in a row. And yes, we will tell you when the last time that happened. It was just about exactly a year ago when Paul Berger came from the number five spot and won four matches in a row to get into the Tournament of Champions. Not easy to do. Today, Joe faces Brian Fuller in the semis. The winner of this match faces Rich Clark in our championship match next week. Rich with that big 719 in the roll-off. But... Uh, in order to think about winning four in a row, Joe's got to get through this match first. And uh, Brian Fuller's been waiting a long time to come back here on Stars and Strikes. Well, Joe will open up shooting at the two and five and a tough piece of wood facing him. And there you see why. Open with a 10. In the pocket and cleans it out. The six and the nine were there, but not for long. You're gonna probably hear a little bit of noise with Brian Fuller up there. He's a lot of his friends with him, and it's a, it's a noisy crew. <laughs> that, oh, that's yeah. why. He makes a lot of noise himself. Well, Brian waited almost eight years to throw that ball. <laughs> the last time he was here in singles competition was January of 1988, when he beat Ed Emerson in the semifinals with a huge 438, and then lost a very close championship match to Bill Logan. So he came that close... Eight pins, in fact, was the difference in that championship match. Came that close to uh, winning a series championship. Sliding by the two-pin, which is the object pin, to try to make that spare. So he ended up with nine on the strike. And a 10 box, 29. Oh, look out. Oh, oh there's a double. For Joe Tavernese. And again, like the last one, got a little bit of a kick on this one. Yep, so he leaves just the four pin, and finally the four pin is kicked out for the double strike. Kind of the mirror image of what happened before. He had the four eight that time, the six nine. The previous Another ball time, in there. Almost the triple. And spare on strike. That's a pretty good start. Yeah, I'd say 69 plus a ball after four. Right, full of the left-hander. Left-handers uh, in the number one and two spots in this series. And 
a nine for Brian. Off target to the right, the half Worcester. for them all. <laughs> Try to play it on the right side of the head pin. I want to go back and correct something that I mentioned earlier, uh, Dan, as Brian works out of that with an eight. Brian actually did not lose a match uh, the last time he was here in singles competition. He's 3-0. and oh. He beat uh, Clarence Davis with a 433. Then he threw a 438 to beat Ed Emerson. And then he won that match by eight wow. pins against Bill Logan with a 363. So Brian is unbeaten here on singles, although it's been almost eight years since he's been here. Another nine pin drop for Joe Tavernese. He could easily had four strikes in a row. Left the five pin both times and converts it both times. And he is off to a flying start. 88 plus a bonus coming for the fifth frame. Open with a 10, strike, strike, spare, spare. Oh, well, we had a little conversation during last week's show about 200 games, and that's how they happen. I mean, Joe has came within two pins of four strikes in a row, and then you could might that's maybe right. talk about a 200 game. That's right. Possible. There's another, another spare, one. though. He's 96 through five, and a spare up in the sixth. As Joe Tavernese is just a machine right now. He's thrown 11 balls through six boxes. And that's with throwing three the first frame. And Brian Fuller running up against a buzzsaw here. Had a strike to start the match, but hasn't marked since, and he's still off target. Oh, no. Right there. Everything but the three pin, uh, two pin. Brian's got to try to weather the storm, get a few marks up there himself. And Hopefully he can turn things around. Or have Joe slow down a little. 106 plus this. Oh, he kicks oh. out. Oh, he got him again. Oh, wow. Why? I, I started to say that just a little fuller. He had another chance for another strike. Kicks out the 4-7, and then finally the 3-6 go down. Six marks in a row. Target that time. Four horsemen, but he also has the five pin. Looking for his seventh mark in a row, and he won't get it. One forty-five through eight. We tape our show, of course, as always, at Park Place Lanes, the newly remodeled Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. You should come by and uh, see the place if you haven't been here in a while. It's uh, got a beautiful new look. And while you're here, be sure and stop in. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner at the Willow Tree North Restaurant, located right inside Park, Park Place Lanes. And uh, say hello to Rodney Cronin and his staff. Great food, great prices, friendly service. And of course, above all else, it's where the crew eats. Brian Fuller really struggling to find his accuracy right now. He's got the head pin and then the eight, nine, and ten pins. A couple pieces of wood behind the head pin, which should help him. Box, but 
a lot of trouble so far for Brian Fuller as Joe Tavernese has really opened up with a high octane first game here. Oh, look oh. out. Wow, I thought he had a chance at another strike. Well, the eight and nine pins, piece of wood still on the plate. It looks to be in a pretty good spot. I don't know, I think he's going to have to come up high and turn it. I think if he goes red line or to the left of the red line, it's going to miss the eight pin. Yeah. Yep. Joe has not left a pin standing in this game. Three tens and six marks in a row, including a double strike. Well, he's got the four pin and then the six ten. I think he's going to play the four with the two pieces of wood in front of it. Snap it across, and there it goes. I didn't mention it the last box, Dan, but if uh, Joe had thrown a strike there in the ninth, he had a chance at a 200 game because if he throws a double strike here in the last two, he's got a shot at it. But now, of course, uh, the best he can do is 175. <laughs> and he may do it. Well, it'll be 174. And a well-deserved round of applause here at Park Place Lanes. 174 for Joe Tavernese. But as you see, needing 55 pins in those last two boxes, if he steps up and throws a double strike, he's got an opportunity, a, shot. a legitimate opportunity at the 200 game. And as the Bulls say, he was in the zone for that game. Brian is in a zone that he just doesn't want to be in right now. He is really struggling. Wow, even that one won't go down for Brian. Brian had a strike in the first, and he has not marked since. And now he's just got the two, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I don't believe we've seen this lead before. Oh, oh my. Close. Coming back again. The eight pin again costing him. And it's still there. Well, last week, Joe Tavernese won his match by 76 pins. That's his lead after one game this week with that huge 174. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes in a minute. Weekends on WNDS are striking. Saturdays at noon, candle pin bowling like you've never seen it before. Candle pin skins. Then, Sundays at noon, it's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Watch the best Candlepin bowlers in New England as they battle for cash prizes and a spot in our annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. WNDS Sports presents the best in Candlepin bowling, Saturdays and Sundays at noon. Only on the winds of New England, WNDS. Coming up at the end of today's show, we will take yet another try to get our first winner of the year in our bonus ball contest, uh, and we hope that it's you, but it can't be unless you send in your postcards. regular size postcards only with your name, your address, and your number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will drop at the end of the show on the bonus ball thrown by our winning bowler. And be sure and mail those cards in to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087, and good luck from all of us here at the Winds of New England, $160 in the jackpot at the end of this hour. Brian Fuller. Wow. Oh, Brian just kind of rolled his eyes and... <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> Not really sure. 
Is that the two pin there, or is that the? Uh, I have no idea. Which one is in the in the channel there? Was that the head pin? <laughs> That's the four pin, I think, on the right. Oh my! Oh. Boy, oh boy! Well, this is a strange box for Brian Fuller. He worked hard for that nine. Let's take a look at the first ball again. Not a bad looking ball. Oh! <laughs> it was the four pin that. Ended up in the channel. Hit the two pin yeah. and knocked it over, but the four pin almost became the two, two. pin. And on top of that, the half Worcester. Well, the uh, quiz at the end of the show in that last box. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it looks like Brian Fuller is having the uh, same day Bill Coffold had last week. Tavernese, who had seven marks in game one. Well, an opportunity for one here. Well, I have a tendency to think he was a little bit leery of the wood out front, wanted to get by it to hit the three pin, and this was a little uh, too far right. If you just tuned in, you missed a 174 opening game for Joe Tavernese. his assault on the head pin with that first ball. I just, I can remember missing it maybe just once that first game. There's another spare. for Brian. Well, how do you figure it? He came out, threw a terrific first ball of the match for a strike, and now he's gone 12 boxes without a mark. I think I mentioned last week that bowlers are, are really superstitious. I can remember bowling. I probably stole the story before. Bowling with the fellow way back when I was in high school. Um, bowled in men's league and one of our bowlers, if he had a chance for a mark in the first box, he would throw it away. <laughs> he was so superstitious that he didn't want to mark in the first box. Maybe there was something to that. Maybe. I always say there's only so many to a customer. You better get them while you can. <laughs> Another 10 for Brian. I'm trying to help him out. Just missed a 10 and <laughs> gave him a strike. Joe Tavernese working on a spare. Again. Oh, boy. Oh, Look at this. Strike. Hello. Joe's not even going to break a sweat in this match. If he threw about 19 or 20 balls the first game and thrown six so far after three boxes in this game. Four horsemen left. He is human. He missed the head. <laughs> Not that time, though. He doesn't miss the spare. That takes us to a break. Three marks in a row for Joe Tavern. He says he continues to light it up here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back. Well, Brian Fuller can only just keep plugging away and hope something good happens.
Klein has really had trouble hitting the head pin here on lane 31, but he just got it that time. The crowd senses it. <laughs> they want him to get a mark. Oh, the long drought is over, and Brian gives himself a round of applause. After 14 open boxes, Brian gets his first spare of the match. Joe Taverny's rolling right along. This ball puts his lead in the match over 100, believe it or not, in just the 14th box. Well, you know when you throw a mark in the sixth box of the second game, and that's your second mark, you're in trouble anyways, <laughs> right. no matter who you're bowling. And now you couple that with a your opponent throws a 174 opening game. 77 and a half this time. He's How slowing down a little bit. How about this? Halfway point of the match, Joe Taverny said 251. After 15 boxes. Hmm. If he can keep that pace for the second half, it'll be the second ever 500 triple on television. It's one of those situations you just want to sit back and say, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's just fun to see it happen. The bowlers get it flowing like this, unfortunately. For Brian. <laughs> fun unless you're the opponent. Right? That's right. <laughs> That's 11 marks now for Joe. I would say the magic number of marks is around 15 for your 400 triple. He's already at, what did you say, 15, 14? 11. 11 now. Oh, oh, it, oh no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not. It's one of those days. He pushed that 10 pin to the left, no less, a couple inches, and it didn't go down. Big nine drop on the spare. And you know, then, of course, gets blocked. You know, I didn't want to say it, but I, I almost said, you know, with his luck, he's probably going to cap that wood and leave it standing now. Going to have to have a ball uh, removed from the channel over near the 10-pin. <laughs> Brian says, you better move it because I know I'll probably hit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the odd thing is, if it, not, if it weren't for that piece of wood, the 10-pin would have been an easier shot because it was That's away right. from the, the, corner, the yeah. corner a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So instead, he gets blocked, and we'll have another open frame. And it's still there. Could have been a double. Yeah, it very easily could have been. In fact, it should have been a double, I think. When you move a pin that much, boy, it should go down. This is on a spare for Joe Tavernese. He'll take seven. Meanwhile, on another planet, <laughs> Joe Tavernese is bowling. Well, what will he do here? He's got to go to left, obviously, but... Yeah, I, where he's got two or three pieces of wood and snap it. No, not a little too much. Too many pieces there, and deadened everything. Leaves himself the 9-10. Well, Joe is in a slump here. Clearly, he didn't hit 100 until the seventh box in this game. <laughs> Boy, that ball was very smooth. Unfortunately, it was dead on the head pin for Spread Eagle. Takes a nine. It's only the second pin he's left standing. He had nine bucks. No, no, I'm sorry, that's his first pin. Right, if you don't count the nine yes. fill on right, the right. spare you, you in the can't tenth. Do that, yeah. right. So it's the first time first he's left pin. the pin standing. Oh, oh Brian ball. Fuller has the double. Hey, how uh, more interesting would this match have been right now if Brian had a triple? That's right. Which he could have had. Well, Brian is capable of throwing big scores. We talked about the back-to-back -back 400s he had here years ago. Oh, that's not the ball he wanted. That was a critical ball right there. No, oh, but he converts it. Unfortunately, he loses the benefit, really, of the double strike with the two fill. 
But give Brian credit. He's bouncing back here. Four marks in the last five boxes, including the double strike. This one off target. He'll grab a couple extra for five and a 131. Two game total, 229. Ryan with 85 pins in the last five boxes of that game. Boy, Joe Tavernese is just, he's bowling well, but he's also getting the extra pin, it seems. When you have a big lead like that, though, it, it seems to happen. You're just a little looser or something, and they just seem to, to go no matter where you hit them. But as I mentioned uh, in the first game, he is, that's one of the few times he's missed a head pin with the first ball, so certainly isn't all luck when you're almost you're going to be over 300 for two games or very close to it. Uh, he'll, oh yeah, he'll be yeah, over he's it. He's got 295 right now. If there are any takers, I, I'll, I kind of <laughs> bet he'd be over 300. Boy, he had a pin shoot right in through the diamond and didn't hit anything. And yes, so oh. One thirty-one and a ball. Twelve marks. Here's number twelve. Just got a kick off the sidewall. Oh, loads it up with eight. A one thirty-nine and a two-game total three thirteen for Joe Tavernese. One game to go here on Stars and Strikes. We have seen weird things happen here, but Joe Tavernese appears to be in the driver's seat with an 84-pin lead going into game three. Well, usually, if you're behind, add 100 pins to the pins that you're behind, and that's what you've got to shoot for. So in Brian's case, he's got to be shooting for a 184 and hope Joe just completely falls apart and has a sub-100 game. pin that time. I'll tell you, any one of these bowlers, uh, Brian or Joe or Rich Clark next week would uh, would love to have 313 after two games next week. Yes. <laughs> that would certainly put them high as far as the seating goes in the tournament of the champions. Bob Kelly is already in. Dan Broder is already in. One of these two guys or Rich Clark will join Bob and Dan next week in the Tournament of Champions. Rich Clark, our number one seed, will face the winner of this match next Sunday at noon here on The Winds. We hope we can be part of your Christmas Eve day next Sunday. Nine for Brian. Brian found the head pin for those four or five boxes late in the second game, but now he's having a problem again. Oh, how about it? Wow. Unbelievable. That's just unfair. It really is. Great look at Brian's reaction after that ball. Here it is again. Oh, move that seven pin, much like he did the ten pin in the first game. Hot 
possibilities here for Joe Tavernese, the four, five, and seven. Yes, yeah, just wants to catch a piece of the wood and the four pin at the same time. Oh, just a little far to the right. Another inch or two to the left. I think he would have converted that for another spare. But right now he's just cruising one box at a time, one less for Brian to work on. Joe's probably trying to figure out if there's any way he can carry some of this scoring over to next week. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. So, oh, my. That is his fifth strike of the match. for Brian. And it's a nine, 28. One of our participating sponsors here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. The folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Emmett Horgan and the gang come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Great shot. And that will take us to a break. Terrific shot for Brian Fuller. For the spare, just trying to make something happen here in the closing frames of this match against Joe Tavernese. We'll be back. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Joe Tavernese is working on a strike. Right through the middle that time, spread eagle minus the 10 pin. Missed the head pin and winds up with the 8-9. And perhaps makeable. I almost want to play in the uh, right-hand tip of that front wood and have it go off the left side wall. He's going way left, but I, I think the shot was in the inside. Nine box for Joe. kind of a day what it's else, for Brian. Yeah, what else can happen? Knocks out the two pin on a spare. Can't even steal the, the half whister. The two and the nine. Nice out for the eight box. Brian Fuller actually led after the first box of this match. But from the second box on, it's been all Joe Tavernese. You know, if you're left with the high-low jack on your third ball, that <laughs> things aren't going too well. Right. Yeah, you're right.
Much like Bill Coffold last week, though, Brian is still trying to work through this and get something together. Yeah, you have to finish the match. They so might as well keep plugging away. Well, Joe Tavernese has cooled off a little bit here in game three. He has just one mark, a strike in the fourth. But he had an 84-pin lead coming in, and he has added to it. This time the three, five, seven, and nine with wood. Who's gonna try to pinch the three pin on the right, but you might leave the five pin. No, nope, came back, get the five, missed the seven. Four or 10. Already at 395 with two boxes to go. That was strange. Looked like he was going to have the 189, and then something came from the back to clear out the right side. I'm not sure what. Sixty-four through seven. Let's look at that first ball. Watch the right side. It was the head pin, I believe. It was the head pin that came back and hit the 10. Good looking first ball there. And what about the leave? The 5 10. Oof. He's going to go right after the five pin. Hopefully, he can slide the winner to the 10. Obviously, it's all academic now, but to see some shot making here going. Final few frames. Oh, there yeah. Oh, nice shot by Brian. <laughs> Man, I just heard Brian. He said, I got a shot at 100 now. Take away that first uh, string. Second game, 139, 131 in favor of Joe Tavernese. This is fairly close. Brian's got a mark working. And the damage was all done, obviously, in that first game. And pretty tough to come back from 76 pins. I don't care who you are. That 10 box puts Joe over 400, but he's actually not going to have a much greater score than he had last week. He had a 404 last week. and. He's at 4.05 right now. And now through the middle. Sarcastic round of applause <laughs> for a 413 for Joe. And he has won his third straight match. And Brian Fuller, who was 3 0 prior to this on Stars and Strikes, all three of those matches back in late December and early January of 1988. And the spare, two in a row. Brian's going to win this third game, probably. But the damage was done in the first. Six on this spare.
Oh, almost. Almost a great shot. Ryan finishes with nine, a 106, and a 335. So another big win for Joe Tavernese. That's three in a row now. He's one step away from the Tournament of Champions. We'll be back in a moment. We will have our bonus ball contest and set you up for the championship match next week when we come back. Don't go away. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, we've seen quite a show these last three weeks by Joe Tavernes. He's increased his score every week. And uh, the last two weeks, gotten out to big starts and cruised home for the win. Yeah, he's just on fire the first game. And he was just in that zone. And, uh, and Brian struggled. And when you fall that far behind uh, with three game, a uh, three-game match, it's pretty tough to come back. And then you start pressing, and you, you just don't seem to get the breaks. And he was proof of that. He didn't get any breaks. He moved that 10-pin a three or four inches and it still wouldn't fall down and Joe just continually pile it up and it was uh, it was just too much to overcome all right let's talk with both bowlers first of all Brian Fuller come on up we have a check for you and uh, a little uh, conversation here as well the round of applause yeah, I know you brought a lot of fans with you and uh, obviously not the match you wanted but we do have a check for you for third place two hundred and fifty dollars uh, and well you threw a strike in the first box and things had to be feeling to pretty lead. feeling pretty good then right yeah, yeah I had the lead for <laughs> one box <laughs> that was it <laughs> well as Dan said uh, bowling against Joe, you know uh, probably a lot of marks are going to be thrown, and boy, it just it seemed like uh, a struggle for you to just find the right spot on the lanes. Uh, I couldn't find the right spot. Yeah. yeah. It was well, know, awful. <laughs> well, we, we, I know you waited a long time to come back here on singles. We've seen you on the other show a little bit, but uh, the, the key now is not to make it as long a wait in between, I guess. Well, i got to throw a better ball, and I just did it. It will be eight more years. <laughs> Brian, thanks a lot. Congratulations. And uh, now we will have Joe Tavernese in the long-awaited Bonus ball contest attempt. Joe's third attempt here is he's won three weeks in a row, $160. And uh, Joe has totaled six, you know, his first two weeks. So he'd be going for something a little better than that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, he might have gotten too many. Let's see. Nine. Let's see. For $160, Dan is dragging out the suspense here. It is not a match. For Lorraine Richards of Suncook, New Hampshire, who guessed seven. So, Lorraine, uh, we will be sending you a consolation prize, of course, and uh, $170 next week, and you'll be back next week. Yes, Wait, you got it all out of the way early. Yeah, I know it. I know it. That's for sure. It's always nice when you start out like that. That's for sure. It takes the pressure off a little bit, you know? Well, yeah, it, as we were saying, it, it makes it difficult for, you know, Brian goes up there, he knows he has to throw strikes yeah. now and makes it tough. Right, it does, exactly. That's why um, it was just, just made it easier for myself, you know, and he was kind of struggled, so. It was just a lot, you know, pretty easy. But Saving Brian's a tough bowler, so you can't let up at all on him. Saving it a little in that third game for next yeah, week? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I hope so. <laughs> I well, hope so. Well, congratulations, uh, Joe. It'll be you and Rich Clark for the championship next week. We look forward to it. Okay, Doug. Thanks all very right. much. Thanks very much. Thanks, Joe, Joe Tavernese with three wins in a row, and here we go. Next week, it will be number five against number one. We mentioned it's been just about a year ago at this time when uh, Paul Berger ran the table from the number five spot and got all the way into the Tournament of Champions. And uh, Joe Tavernese will try and do the same next week. He will face uh, our number one seed, Rich Clark, who had a huge roll-off, 719, including a 192 fifth game uh, at King Lanes to qualify for this series. I've, uh, I bowl with Rich, so I've seen him in the last few weeks. Uh, I don't know if anyone's been any hotter. Uh, he's been bowling some terrific scores, and the 192 proves that fact. So uh, it, it shapes up on paper, in any ways, to be a great final match. Well, we are looking forward to it, and we hope that you will join us uh, over the holiday weekend next weekend. We hope to be a part of your holiday here on the Winds of New England. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Don't forget, Saturday at noon, we will have Candlepin Skins from the London Airy Bowling Center. And then next Sunday, Christmas Eve at noon, it will be Joe Tavernese against Rich Clark for the series championship here on Stars and Strikes. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week, everybody.